Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin back at the Southwest Ag Conference and I'm pretty excited because I'm here with the A-Team. Aaron Stefanis from uh, Pride Seeds and Aaron Bramer from Veritas. So uh, thanks guys for taking some time. You guys just finished your presentation. And yep. what you were talking about was a precision ag planting site that you guys worked on this summer and I had a chance to visit with you. Yep. And uh, what you're learning from you know, an agronomy perspective and a data perspective. Ha ha Aaron, tell us about the site and what you guys were trying to achieve. Okay, thanks Bernard. So yeah, uh, that site was in Elmira and uh, we had essentially all of our varieties from uh, 79 day all the way up to 97 day. And uh, what we want to do is we want to take a field scale look at uh, population densities for each hybrid and how they respond. We do have small plot data internally, but we just wanted to make that to a bigger scale and, uh, and see how that works. Also, we partnered with Veritas who helped us write the scripts, mm -hmm. but the biggest part also was the data, data analysis. So they right. essentially crunched all the numbers to do profitability for hybrids. So we're not just looking at yield, we're looking at the best return on investment for, uh, for each hybrid. Right. Um, so the plot was set, uh, set, uh, set up very simply. We had four rows of each variety with different blocks of population. We replicated it coming back in different randomization uh, so we could uh, essentially get good data for each variety and we did it in corn and soy. Awesome. Let's talk about what you found. Um, both of you guys jump in here. First thing you know what you really looked at was, and this site and other sites as well, was downforce. The importance of downforce and I think can make you money. Yep. yep. So uh, the, the downforce um, and working with uh, Pride Seeds, it comes down to data. Farmers have a pile of data to be able to uh, utilize and to uh, sort through. Yeah. One of the newest uh, areas that farmers are talking about is this uh, automatic downforce, whether it's pneumatic using air or hydraulic. Mm -hmm. um, works great to uh, be able to modify your downforce as you're going across the field as soil conditions are uh, changing. We had a really interesting site this year that had uh, a nice bit of clay uh, mm -hmm. and loam uh, soil on one side, and then the other side was a, a nice bit more uh, sand, sandy loam mm -hmm. uh, soils. We actually had two planters, identical planters, pulled by identical tractors, planted on the same day. We were able to look at the data. One of the planters had hydraulic down pressure, one of them didn't. On the heavier ground, we had about a six and a half bushel increase. On the lighter soil, we didn't see any uh, um, significant increase. Right. So it was interesting to be able to have that data. Right, what about from the agronomic side? About, you know, what... Yep, so for me on the agronomic side, it all comes down to consistency. We want those plants, we hear it from Ken Ferry, we hear it from uh, Randy Doughty, we want those plants coming up within at, at least 24 hours or totally the same. Because uh, we're getting yield drag if we're at least 48 hours behind. That's two leaf colors behind, that's from Ken Ferry's work. And uh, essentially, we're losing yield on every plant that's behind on that. So it's that consistency. We want, as Randy Doughty says, if we want a 500 bushel crop of corn, you better have a 500 bushel stand. All right, now, part of that, and one of the things that you guys have been looking at, variable rate planting. Now, the, the part of it is obviously agronomy, but I want to talk about writing the script and getting it right. You're so, writing the script, there's a lot of different uh, data layers that go into uh, making the script, and it really depends on what the grower uh, feels comfortable. They can use yield data, they can use elevation, they can use drone imagery, satellites, there's all kinds of different data. Biggest data uh, that is the most important piece is the data layer between the farmer's ears, mm -hmm. their experience. If they know what the, that field should behave like, and if that prescription doesn't match up with how they think that farm uh, should uh, be behaving, that's probably not a good uh, script. If they are comfortable with that script, it's just gonna make their lives uh, easier. But an important part of making the script work is to see how it is actually making you money. So on profitability, so working with uh, Pride Seeds on their uh, research site, we were able to uh, get res what we call response curves. The response curves actually tell us what is the ideal uh, profitability for that particular farm. Mm -hmm. Now farmers have the ability to have every one of their fields a research site, mm -hmm. very easy, Farmers don't have the time to be doing research sites on every one of their fields. With the technology they, that they have, it makes their jobs easy. Mm. And that data is critical to be able to make better decisions. What type of a bushel differences were you seeing? So on uh, corn, we see between five and seven bushels uh, increase. Um, soybeans, it's uh, about four to five bushel uh, um, difference. And then we also do some work with uh, edible beans. Uh, Pride doesn't sell edible beans, but we do see a big uh, bump on edible beans uh, as well. So 
uh, variable rate, it's not going to make a, a huge difference in the bottom line, um, usually in the $15 to $25 an acre. But you spread that across the hundreds or thousands of acres, it starts to add up pretty quick. Right. Talk about agronomy. I mean, you're looking at the, the variability of your knolls, valleys, all yep. kinds of things that you need to get into the script. Yep. And while they're good. On the best part of all this stuff is, is that it all works together really, really well. So as I asked the question to the crowd several times, how many of you make your decisions based on last year? And like I said, if you are always looking at last year and expecting the same thing the next year, you're never moving forward. We're lifting all this layers of data and bringing your averages together and actually looking at that field from a holistic approach you're actually going to be able to drive into the future. And actually, Ken Ferry's work that he talked about really supports that. But from an agronomy standpoint, you're actually utilizing those hybrids in the environments that you have them selected for. So the, the information that we work together on and making those profitability maps, you can actually now say, okay, I know agronomically and profitably that this variety will work in this management zone at this population. So you kind of meld that together and uh, it, it makes for good results. A awesome. couple of quick things before we we, we cut out of here. Um, reducing overlap, those automatic row shutoffs, really pay. 100%, if you're going to uh, um, use them, make sure they're set up right. A lot of guys have the monitors, they have the technology, they're afraid to uh, set it up. Once it's set up, it's working on corn over multiple years, multiple sites. We're seeing about a $200 an acre where you have overlap. There is overlap no matter how square you think your field is or how way good of a job. You're going to see between 2 and 3% in a best case scenario. And a worst case, case scenario when your fields get crooked or you got very large planters, you're going to see 10 to 11% overlap. That's huge money. Awesome. Um, no brainer to be using uh, overlap.